Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here and love Kubernetes, DevOps, and cloud native technologies, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss more tutorials like this. And if you find this video helpful, drop a like. It really helps the channel grow. Now let's talk about Kubernetes. It's powerful, but let's be honest, it can be a nightmare to manage in production. Security concerns, performance bottlenecks, and complex networking make running Kubernetes at scale a real challenge. That's where RK2 comes in. RK2, or Rancher Kubernetes Engine 2, is a hardened, enterprise-grade Kubernetes distribution built for security, performance, and ease of use. In this video, first, we will explore what RK2 is and how it stands out from standard Kubernetes, what makes it different, and why it might be the better choice for your workloads. Then, we'll break down RK2's architecture showing how its design improves security, efficiency, and overall cluster performance compared to a traditional Kubernetes setup. Finally, we'll get hands-on with a step-by-step -step installation of RK2, setting up both control plane and agent nodes, and deploying Rancher on top to manage our Kubernetes environment. By the end, you'll have a fully operational RK2 cluster ready to scale and manage workload securely. So let's get started. RK2 or Rancher Kubernetes Engine 2 is a CNCF certified Kubernetes distribution designed for security and production grade workloads. It is the successor to RKE and focuses on hardened security, improved performance, and multi cluster management. Unlike standard Kubernetes, which requires manual security hardening, RKE 2 is built with strict security policies enabled by default. It is FIPS 140 2 compliant making it a great choice for organizations handling sensitive workloads such as financial institutions and government agencies. RK2 also runs without Docker using container D at its default runtime, which improves efficiency and reduces dependencies. To understand why RK2 is different, let's break down its architecture. At a high level, RK2 follows a traditional Kubernetes model consisting of a control plane that manages the cluster and agent nodes that run workloads. But unlike standard Kubernetes, RK2 is designed with better security, high availability, and lightweight performance optimizations. The control plane is responsible for managing the cluster and includes the API server, HCD, scheduler, and the controller manager. Agent nodes handle application workloads using kubelet, kube proxy, and the container runtime. RK2 enforces strict security policies, including SE Linux, pod security policies, and encryption by default. The control plane in RK2 is the core of the cluster, responsible for managing cluster state, scheduling workloads, and handling networking. Let's break down the key components of the control plane and how RK2 improves them. First, we have the API server. This is the front door to Kubernetes, handling all requests, applying security policies, and processing changes to the cluster. Next is etcd which serves as the brain of the cluster. It's a distributed key value store that keeps track of every pod, deployment, and configuration in Kubernetes. Then we have the scheduler and the controller manager. The scheduler is responsible for deciding which node should run which workload, while the controller manager monitors the health of the cluster and enforces desired states. RK2 enhances the control plane by running these core services as static pods. This means that even if the control plane crashes, Kubernetes will automatically restart these critical components, ensuring higher reliability. Agent nodes in RK2 are where your applications actually run. These nodes handle pod execution, networking, and container management while staying lightweight and efficient. Let's break down what makes them special. At the core of every agent node is the kubelet. This is the agent that runs on each node, ensuring that all workloads are running as expected. It continuously communicates with the control plane and follows scheduling decisions. Next, we have the kube proxy, which manages networking between pods, services, and nodes. It ensures that workloads can communicate efficiently, regardless of where they are running in the cluster. RK2 is optimized for performance and security, using a streamlined runtime and networking stack. Instead of requiring manual configurations, it automatically integrates with container runtimes and networking components, making deployment easier and reducing system complexity. Now that we understand how RK2 works, let's install and configure a fully functional RK2 cluster 
including both the control plane, also known as master node, and the agent nodes. We'll go step by step. Installing RKA2 on the master node, configuring agent nodes to join the cluster, and finally, installing Rancher on top of RKA2. Let's start with the master node installation. First, we will download and install RKA2 using a simple one-liner command. This pulls the latest version and sets up everything needed to run Kubernetes securely. Once installed, we need to enable and start the RKA2 service. This step ensures that control plane is launched and that it can automatically restart on reboot, keeping our cluster running even after the system restarts. Since we are starting the RKA2 server for the first time, it will need to initialize all control plane components, including the API server, scheduler, and HCD database. This process can take up to a minute, depending on your hardware and available resources. Be patient while it sets up the cluster. Next, we configure our environment so we can interact with the cluster. We set the cube config variable to point to the configuration file generated by RKA2. This allows us to use kubectl to manage the cluster. We also add RKA2's binary to our system path so we can run Kubernetes commands from anywhere. Finally, we verify that the master node is up and running by checking its status. If everything is working correctly, the node should appear in our ready state. Now we will install and configure the agent node to join the cluster. Before we install RKA2 on the agent node, we need a registration token from the master node. This token allows new agent nodes to securely authenticate and join the cluster. Next, we need to log into the agent node via SSH and install RKA2 binary. Once connected, we'll install the RKA2 using the agent mode. This command downloads and installs the RKA2 agent binary on the node. Once the installation is complete, we need to enable and start the RKA2 agent service. However, the agent service will fail to start if we don't provide the registration information, including the master server address and the token. So before proceeding, let's configure the agent node to connect to the master node. To securely join the cluster, we need to create a configuration file that tells the agent node where to find the master server and how to authenticate. First, create the necessary configuration directory. Now open the configuration file in a text editor like Vim or Nano. Inside this file, add the following details, replacing master node IP with the actual IP or the DNS entry of the master node and the token with the registration token we copied earlier. Once the configuration is saved, restart the agent service to apply these changes. Now our agent node is successfully registered with the master node. Let's verify the setup. To interact with the cluster, we need to set the kubeconfig environment variable. We also update the system path so that we can run the kubectl commands from anywhere. Finally, let's check if the agent node is successfully joined by listing all nodes in the cluster. If everything is working correctly, we should see the agent node listed as ready, meaning it is now fully connected to the cluster and ready to run workloads. It's finally time to install Rancher on top of RKE2. First, we need to install Helm, the package manager for Kubernetes. Helm simplifies the deployment of complex applications, including Rancher. Run this command to download and install Helm. Once installed, verify that Helm is working by checking its version. To interact with the cluster from this node, we need to set the kubeconfig environment variable. We also update the system path so that we can run the kubectl command.
Next, we need to install Cert Manager, which Ranchi uses to handle SSL certificates for secure HTTPS connection. Wait for all Cert Manager ports to be in a ready state before proceeding. Now we need to add the Rancher Helm repository so we can install Rancher using Helm charts. Run the following command to add the Rancher Helm repository. Now comes the main step, installing Rancher on RKE2 using Helm. We need to specify a host name for the Rancher UI, which should be a domain name pointed to the cluster's IP. Run this Helm install command replacing rancher.example.com with your actual host name. Now we wait for Rancher's pods to initialize. This can take a few minutes. Once the Rancher deployment is complete, we are ready to access the UI. Before you can log in for the first time, you need to retrieve the bootstrap password. Now open up a browser and go to https.rancher.example.com. Make sure to replace this value with the one that you have set during the Helm installation. On the first login, Rancher will ask you to set an admin password. Ensure to set a strong password and then proceed. Once logged in, you will see Rancher dashboard where you can manage Kubernetes cluster, deploy applications, and configure security settings. And that's it. You now have a fully functional RKA2 cluster with both master and agent nodes configured, and Rancher installed for managing Kubernetes at scale. But what good is Kubernetes cluster without workloads? In the next video, we'll take things a step further and show you how to create a Kubernetes cluster on DigitalOcean using Rancher. You'll see how easy it is to provision, scale, and manage cloud-based clusters directly from Rancher's UI. Now, I want to hear from you. What's the biggest challenge you face when managing Kubernetes cluster? Is it scalability, security, or troubleshooting failures? Drop a comment below and let's discuss. If you found this helpful, Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next episode. See you in the next one.